Adolf Sutro, a self-made millionaire and former mayor of San Francisco, created the Sutro Baths, a public bathhouse and museum. Adolf Sutro was born on April 29, 1830 in Aachen, Prussia. As a child, he enjoyed learning about machinery at his father's cloth factory, S. and E. Sutro. In 1850, he immigrated to the U.S. sailing on a steamer, the California. He arrived in San Francisco on November 21st that same year. By 1854, he owned two stores in San Francisco, where he sold cigars, pipes, and a variety of other products. In 1869, he began building a tunnel to the Comstock Lode in Nevada to provide ventilation and drainage of the mines. It was completed in 1878. After selling his share of the tunnel stocks, he returned to San Francisco and began investing in real estate. In 1881, he purchased from Samuel Tetlow a cottage and land on a cliff above the sea. At Sutro Heights, he added rooms and a statuary, a lovely garden, gazebo, and a parapet. Charles Butler built the first cliff house in 1863, and Sutro bought it in 1881. Sutro rebuilt the cliff house in Victorian style after it burnt down on Christmas in 1894, and it was completed the same year he opened Sutro Baths. In 1895, the year before he opened the new Cliff House and Baths, he became mayor of San Francisco and served a two-year term. Opened on March 14, 1896, Sutro Baths had an amphitheater, a natural history museum, and seven swimming pools. A classic Greek-style portal led visitors to a glass structure containing 517 dressing rooms, six steam-heated saltwater pools that varied in temperature, and one freshwater pool. The pools measured 500 feet by 254 feet. At high tide, 1.7 million gallons of water could fill or empty the swim tanks in an hour. At low tide, the salt water in the six tanks were pumped in from the ocean through an artificial cave powered by a steam engine. In this manner, the water filled the tanks in five hours. Near the pump house was the laundry facility where 20,000 bathing suits and 40,000 towels rented to bathers were laundered. For their amusement, the public were provided with eight slides, including one giant slide, 30 swim rings, and a springboard. Bathers were able to watch the Lender Sisters and other vaudeville acts on a platform that covered one of the swim tanks. The public were also provided with two railways that transported passengers to the baths, the Cliff House and Ferries Railroad and the Sutro Railway. The Cliff House and Ferries Railroad carried passengers along California Street and the shores, whereas the Sutro Railroad carried passengers on Clement Street to the baths. In 1907, nine years after Sutro died, the Cliff House again burned down, so Sutro's daughter, Emma, had it rebuilt in a neoclassical style. In 1937, because the baths were no longer commercially successful, Sutro's grandson converted the largest pool into an ice skating rink. In the 50s, the new owner, George Whitney, totally replaced the baths with a huge ice rink. However, in 1966, the ice rink was destroyed by a fire. Then, in 1973, the Sutro Baths ruins became part of the Golden Gate National Recreation Area. Now visitors are able to enjoy the Sutro Bath ruins and only imagine what it must have been like to enter this spectacular glass building and swim there.
At high tide, waves would first enter the tide pool area. Next, the seawater made its way through channels to the U-shaped settling pond. After that, the water was steam heated, then filtered in the filtration tank, and finally pumped into the swim tanks. At low tide, water was pumped in from the sea through an artificial cave. It is an unseasonably warm November day at the San Francisco shoreline. Eric Black, a local surfer, is exploring the Sutro bathrooms, all that is left of the once grand public bathhouse and museum. He is investigating what remains of the structure that housed the settling and filtration tank near the pump house. It is low tide and the sea is calm, so the tunnel is rather dry with just a few small puddles. On days when the waves are rough, they splash and thunder through the tunnel. We can see the waves below through a natural cave cavity. This tunnel was once used for quarrying operations. It is not the artificial cave that pumped water into the pools at low tide. In the 70s, the cave was closed by the Park Service to ensure public safety. To the north end of the cave is Seal Beach, and in the distance, the Marin Headlands, part of the Golden Gate Recreation Area. These two are heading back through the cave, and so will Eric. A couple are seated on the walkway, enjoying the scenery. Just one last stop above the tunnel to get a better view of the seal rocks, which used to be inhabited by marine birds and Sutro's beloved seals. And in the distance, there's the Golden Gate Bridge.